what's going on yo what it is so let's go ahead and slide on these topics and the first thing i want to cover is the passing of anthony mims who was the older brother of the rapper yo Gotti. now he was shot and killed on saturday in memphis after attending a repast for his uncle and it's just a sad situation anyway that you look at it but a lot of people feel that it was well warranted because they're saying that he has something to do with the passing of young Dolph and that he put forty thousand dollars out there in the streets to have young Dolph execute now, since the passing of Big Juke, there's been a lot of chit chat in the street. There was a guy that came forward saying that Yo Gotti and Big Juke's mom almost got hit up in the process of them going at Big Juke. They almost killed Yo Gotti's mama. I didn't want y'all to know that part. When they got to shooting, when dude ran up and started busting and everything like that and getting Big Juke. Yeah, Yo Gotti's mama opened up the door and ran away. Now imagine Big Juke and Yo Gotti attending a repast to honor their uncle who passed away, and then Big Juke ends up getting murked in front of his mom, and his mom narrowly escapes. Man, it's pretty clear and evident that those paper route boys, they ain't playing. They sliding for Dolph years later. Now another theory that's been thrown out there is the fact that people are saying that Yo Gotti probably sacrificed his own brother given the fact that the murder trial for Dolph starts in about a couple of months, and that Big Juke was going to be implicated as the individual that actually actually paid the money to have young Dolph and ultimately Yo Gotti wanted to eliminate the possibility of his big brother going to court and basically turning on him and pointing the finger at him because more than likely that 40k came from Yo Gotti. Now there was another individual that was hit up with Big Juke and I believe it was his security guard and he's still in ICU recovering. But anyway what I want to do right here is play you guys a few clips. There's some updates. A lot of people are talking about this situation giving their two cents and then I'll come back and give you the news in regards to Cassie and Diddy. So sit tight and I'll be right back. Now there's a lot of funny business going on behind this Big Juk situation. For y'all who know, Big Juk, Yo Gotti's brother, was gunned down leaving a repass in Memphis. And a lot of people are saying this has to do with the young Dolph murder. CMG, PRE beef, they just slid on back and else his brother, now they done got Gotti. I can see why y'all think that way, but I think it's a little deeper. Young Dolph's murder trial was set to start in March of 2024, where allegedly Yo Gotti and Big Juke were going to be implicated as financiers behind the Young Dolph murder. Now, Gotti can't have that. He dated Angela Simmons and walking in the White House, having lunch. Listen, I don't know if y'all might be aware, but the sacrifice is real. This would have been a perfect time for him to eliminate his brother. Because if his brother would have pointed the finger at him, Gotti would have went away for life. And just like Nino Brown said, am I my brother's keeper? But I want to hear y'all thoughts. Do y'all feel that Yo Gotti could have possibly backdoed his own brother? I would love to know. Sources close to the family of rapper Yo Gotti confirm the man killed outside a Hickory Hill event center is Gotti's brother. Memphis police identified him as 47-year-old Anthony Mims, also known as Big Juke. Mims was shot in the parking lot of Pernown's Restaurant and Event Center. Another man who was shot is still alive but in the hospital. Tonight, police are looking for a white Ford Explorer SUV in connection with the shooting. It has dark tinted windows and black wheels. A witness told police they saw suspects in the SUV speeding away, and surveillance video also shows this. If you recognize this vehicle or have any information, call Crime Stoppers at 901-528-CASH. Oh boy, that boy Jay Fizzle dropped this about a month or two ago. You say he was trying to put a whole fifth in juke. Hmm. Now that I had forgot it. Man, you know. First of all, we have to be careful what we put on records because they've been putting people away for what you put on records for years. So I don't want to hear that I'm talking about it. I'm pretty sure everybody done heard it. You know what I'm saying? And the thing about it, Juke got shot 39 times. And they say that it had a switch on it. And then Jay Fizzle's song, you know, he dropping. He talking about switches. He talking about uh, he going to put a whole 50 round of Juke. All they doing is hiding from him. All I'm going to say is say this right here, man. I understand a lot of y'all young Dolph fans, which I am too. I fuck with Dolph, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, Dolph, that was my guy. You know what I'm saying? As far as music. But I'm not beefing. I'm not on the front line with Dolph. I'm not on the front line with Gotti. You know what I'm saying? We have to learn 
you know, we can like people's music and feel where they're coming from, but you can't put yourself on the front line. I seen a lot of y'all come in on my last video, and uh, y'all was, you know, very disrespectful to the man. Hey, I don't hate now one of them guys because I wasn't in the streets with them, so I can't do that. Every time you kill somebody, the family hurts, though. So when I say rest in peace, it's because I know what that man mama feeling. Just like I knew what Dolph family or whatever was feeling, man. So y'all do, you know, y'all chill out. A lot of y'all not gangsters in the street, so y'all don't feel it. Y'all just living it through these rap music and all that. But it's real out here. And I've been out here enough and it did enough. I know it's real. You know what I'm saying? But, man, Gotti was at the funeral also. But Gotti got on down. The same thing Juke should have did. I, I want to say this right here. Paper route going hard. <laughs> they still riding for Dolph. They still sliding years later, man. You know, over a little later. They still sliding. But I want to say this right here. When y'all take out a major in the city of Memphis, or in the city, it ain't got to be city of Memphis, in the city. When y'all take out a major person, man, don't come back. Walking around the city and moving through the city like you can move like you ain't did nothing. Because it don't matter if it's a year or two. Tupac said it. <laughs> he was always real. Rat tat 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 tat. Mother came back after all these years. It, it don't matter. Ain't no time limit on it, man. Ain't no time limit on it, man. So, like, y'all start coming through there like y'all the godfather. Because now, guess what? Who the target now? Key Glock. Key Glock was next in line on the Dolph. So now, it's been going back and forward. Black Youngster Brother got took out. It was from Paper Route. Whatever. You know, with the beef or whatever. Then you turn around, got uh, uh, Dolph took out. Then then that big juke, your brother, uh, your got it brother took out. They really won't got it. But it's going to be hard to get him. They really won't, but it's going to be hard to get him. But now, they done hurt got it. They didn't get got it. But they hurt him. They took that man and brother. So God, it might not move. I know a lot of people saying, oh, it's about to be hot in the city. Probably so. On some street, low value shit. But God ain't finna call no shots just yet because he know he, they watching him. But when he do, drop that money in the streets. Key Glock, be safe. You got to watch yourself. You the target, man. They got a, it, it, it's a stepping stone, man. This ain't checkers. It's chess, man. Let's go. It's not even that serious. It's some rap at the end of the day. Dolph not here because of some rap. Somebody got mad. That, or you know what? Let me not even because I don't know the facts because the facts are not just plainly clear. But if I were to guess based on the history of things, rap, bro, a song or two, some ego. Let's, no, 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 no. Let's take that. Let's let's break that down even more. Ego. He not here because of ego. That's a spirit. If if anybody just want to call a spade a spade, it's a spirit. And he's not here because of some ego. And even if you say, well, he possessed the ego. At the end of the day, <laughs> we, we, we call people because of a bruised, a scarred ego. What is even like people get killed every day because you disrespected me. Nipsey Hussle not here because the old boy said he felt disrespected. You're taking a life because you feel disrespected. That's the weakest ever. What are you talking about? Go home and cry. Go home and cry. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Never Stop Shari. A lot of people are verbalizing concern for Angela Simmons and thinks it's time for her to get out of this relationship with Yo Gotti. If you did not know, yesterday, Yo Gotti's brother, Big Juk, was unalive. They both had attended their uncle's funeral. And after the funeral, Yo Gotti um, supposedly went back to get on a plane, but his brother continued on to the repass. And after the repass was sitting in a car, an individual supposedly came and attacked him. And he was declared deceased later on at the hospital. And people are concerned about Angela and her proximity to all of this violence. For those of you that have been following this war, especially since young Dolph has been unalived, it has been hot in Memphis. Yesterday, last year, Memphis was the number one in
sides in the country and they're saying now with this situation with big jook being unalived it is only going to get worse and angela being so close to yo Gotti has to be dangerous for her as a mother as a mother of a son who's also already lost his father through violence individuals think that angela really needs to rethink her association and the relationship that she has with yo Gotti. my question is what is it about the good girls that love to go bad unlike a lot of women who deal with certain men because of financial pressures or needs angela simmons was literally born into hip-hop royalty her father is rev run from run dmc she was born into status wealth opportunity by the time she was in high school, she was working Baby Fat, one of the biggest hip-hop brands back then. And by the time she graduated from high school, her and her sister had their own business. So many good girls that want to go bad, that want to go out here and get something totally opposite of their father, of the lifestyle that they were born into. And Angela Simmons just seems to be a perfect example of that. I also think that the devil is running one on her. Y'all remember Angela lost her son's father in 2018. Her son's father's name was Sutton. He was unalived in 2018 in Atlanta. Um, they say right in front of the, his house, kind of in the same manner that Mr. Big Jook was unalived yesterday. So, you know, I don't know what is going on with Angela and her need to be associated with these type of men. But, you know, girl, you ain't from the streets. So why you keep on being pressed to hang out with street dudes? Have a good day. What the f*** y'all thought was gonna happen, dog? Y'all all up in the sea like sweet. Man, long live flipper. What the, what the f wrong with these boys? What the f you thought was going to happen, boy? All right, so you guys just saw and heard all of that, and it's just a sad situation all the way around. Now, as far as Yo Gotti sacrificing his brother, I don't know if I believe that. There's no proof of that, but we know that the hip hop game is evil, so it's not above the realm of possibility. But I personally believe that they just caught Big Jook slipping and Young Dolph's people slid on him. And personally, I don't think that Yo Gotti would put his own mom in danger, but again, like I said, we're dealing with hip hop and it's evil and it's satanic, so nothing is too far fetched. But ultimately, at this point all we can do is pray for peace in memphis i have a good friend out there and we talked on the phone on yesterday and he's contemplating moving to south carolina because he said the environment is just too rough rugged and raw even in the good neighborhoods you still can't trust anything you can't trust your surroundings and at the end of the day he just wants better for his children he says like when they're at school and they get a call from the teacher they're afraid that they're going to say that their children has been deleted because of the violence that goes on at the school and he was also telling me on yesterday Yesterday that he finally convinced his wife that it was time to move she finally came to the conclusion that they need to find a better life for themselves and their kids because he's from Virginia originally and she's from Memphis and she didn't want to leave her home but now that her mom has passed away and it's been a couple of years since her passing she has agreed to move so I told my man I said bro if I can help you with anything I got y'all's back because I truly understand but anyway let's go ahead and get into this information that I received in regards to Diddy shelling out more money to Cassie to to keep her from filing a lawsuit in California and originally I told you guys in previous videos that I heard that it was 20 million dollars that she settled for when she filed that lawsuit in New York City but a prominent lawyer within the Los Angeles area shed some more light in regards to how much Cassie received from the lawsuit that she filed in New York City and the potential lawsuit that she was gonna file in Los Angeles and it says here hey what up man I have another golden nugget for you about how much Cassie actually got attorney blank and I cannot absolutely say their name said that Cassie got 20 25 million from the lawsuit she filed against Diddy in New York and another 25 million to not file a lawsuit in the state of California. This does not mean she isn't working on a documentary exposing Diddy. I have been told that Cassie is no longer interested in telling her story to Oprah and Gayle King. It's been said that she has shifted her focus on another network to tell her story. No word so far what network that will be, but she is working on something behind the scenes. I do believe this information is true given the status of this lawyer and who they have represented in the past from Ye, Kim Kardashian, Leonardo DiCaprio, Brad Pitt, and more. By the way, I emailed the itinerary. Yell at you later. All right, so that's what I'm hearing in regards to how much Cassie got paid. So it seems as though she got a $50 million payout, not a $100 million payout like people are saying, but it's been said that she's gotten a $50 million payout. So 
I don't know this to be true. I don't know any of this to be factual. It's all alleged. I'm just reporting what was sent to me, right? But I do trust the fact that this lawyer that he named within this text message is a very legit lawyer. But anyway, I'm gonna let this go right here. I want you guys to drop down in the comments and let me know what you think about everything that was discussed within this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And until next time, peace.